Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, folks. I'm John, joined by... And I'm Jeremy. Good enough for government work, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How are we doing, sir? Yeah, not too bad. It's been a, been a hectic couple weeks, but other than that, so... Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, since our last meeting, it's I've had some fairly good weeks training, but some fairly bad just kind of personal weeks. So it's 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 been a very interesting testament to just training where it's like, yeah, everything else is terrible, but um, hey, I got my training in today. That's good. Yeah, that's good. The one thing that's keeping things, uh, the linchpin that's keeping me insane, it's uh, karate training. Cool. What have you been up to in terms of tra- training lately? I think last time I, I was battling a hamstring injury and and still going in and out, but I mean. It's been a little bit more consistent lately to get in, train a little bit. You know, I I can't push it, but I, I just kind of I wouldn't say go through the motions, but just kind of go light, do limited, stretch some more, go light, do limited, stretch a little more. You know, so just kind of baby steps right now still, but it's getting a lot better. So that's good. That's good. The ham, hamstrings are our tough one to kind of recover from. I'm dealing with oh. like short little Achilles, like this weird little Achilles tinge that I've got where I know it's like I can run on it all day long, but like the moment I do like a like a like a heel stretch or something like that, it just like goes through the roof for whatever reason. Got mm-hmm. no no idea why. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I get it. Which affects the. Uh, topic we're going to get into today which is performance Woo-hoo. now what do we mean i guess a good way to introduce this topic would be to say performance in martial arts has two meanings. at least when it comes to training it has two meanings one in the actual public aspect where people are looking at you and you're doing something as regards to martial arts you're doing a skill you're doing a a set you're doing a kata you're doing a technique you're you're just doing a big demonstration you look they're looking at people are looking at the performance of your martial arts the other the other part of the deconstruction of that word when it comes to training is also your efficiency your ability your actual readiness to take on any any situation and how high or how well you perform in any given situation and these two things, at least on the face of them, are very different, but yet inextricably related. So today, I think it would be good if we got into that and kind of broke down how these things mesh together and then what, the, what, what they mean and how they've affected our, both in our training, our learning, our teaching, and just our general journey with martial arts, how we, we've tackled with them. Jeremy, I'll pass the ball over to you. Bob. I think everybody goes through it. You know, it, and it's kind of a, it, it, it's something that definitely everybody has to go through and has to figure out for themselves. And don't mean to sidestep the the topic, but, you know, at, at parts it's like, okay, you're doing it for show. And then I think you get to a point where it's like, you know, if I'm just doing it the way I need to, I don't need to do anything different for show as opposed to, just doing it. I think some some people have trouble deciphering between the two. Like sometimes we'll do like demonstrations for one. And I know some sometimes and, and I've done it too. I mean you get so wrapped up in the demonstration you you're, you're trying to do your best. You're trying to put your best foot forward. And then, you know, something doesn't quite come out correctly. And then and sometimes you'll get called out on it. And that's and that's fine, you know. God forbid, you, you know, the mis- a mistake be made in front of a watching crowd, right? Right. I mean, a lot of times you're, you're going to be harder on yourself than anybody else is. Because, I mean, you know exactly what mistakes you're making. Yeah. And and sometimes it's kind of cool because you'll make a mistake, you'll recover, and you'll, 
you know, kind of go back in your head. It's like, what in the heck did I just do? Hmm, that was kind of cool. So, I, I, I would say that the two, where these two things merge together, because we're also talking in the practical situation, like how, how do you perform well under stress? How do you perform well under pressure? I think the bridge point would be that pressure, that outside influence, that outside stress that's uncontrollable, right? Exactly. And I think I think a long time ago, I I believe it was my instructor Robbie who basically told me, "Hey, you you practice how you train, and you train how you practice, and if you train the same way over and over and over." How you train is how it's actually going to come out. Now, a lot of people have taught, have, have used this, well, I've said this in a lot of different places. <clears throat> I am I am a little wary. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, that's not to take anything away from what was said then or what that actually means, but I'm right. afraid it's become something of a trope to a degree. Like I, it's something like people say, but they don't necessarily know I, what that means or know how to kind of put that into any sort of you know practice because it's like a, a example i don't want to say counter example but an example would be i do 100 push-ups today can i do 100 push-ups tomorrow should i do 100 push-ups the next day right no i got you i mean can i do a month you are training the same way monday that i can on tuesday that i can on friday right um I mean, the the best thing I can think of is, <clears throat> are you not only getting your physical physicality or physical training in along with your mental training? And so I, I think that becomes that becomes kind of a an issue because I think a lot of people, they'll just go go through the physical piece and they think the mental piece should exist. And that's not the case at all. I, I, they're two separate things that need to come together. And they'd be trained simultaneously. So to kind of say kata, kata would be a good, an easy one to kind of look at for the, this, right? A lot of people will say like kata is the kind of mental or physical, Moving meditation, as I've seen, heard a lot of people say in the past. Yeah. Even I'm, I'm, I'm also afraid that kind of falls in the trope, in a trope too, because using kata to only do something like that, or to only be kind of this dance to be meditative, or to work on your <laughs> mental training, while at the same time ignoring the actual performance of it, that's supposed to have some sort of meaning. Um, I mean. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. When, when I'm really into studying kata, it's it's really one of the hardest things that I do because it's not okay. I'm just going through these motions that I've done like ten thousand times. Da, 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 da. No, I mean I'm constantly thinking as I'm doing these motions, and and sometimes my katas don't quite come out as quick or as dynamic as some some do. But I'm constantly thinking, okay, how am I going to use this? How am I going to use this? How am I going to I mean, I'm constantly asking that question while, while I'm doing this. And, you know, I may go through 30, 40 moves and, you know, nothing comes to me. And then all of a sudden I'll do one thing and then, I'll stop doing kata and just work on that one thing. Like, okay, how can I, how can I incorporate this into some type of technique? How can I work into this, into some type of, of methodology or some other lesson? I mean, is, is, is this a entry, entry move? Is it an actual technique? Is it, is it, a, you know, is it a finishing type move? Is it a lockup? Is it this? So, I mean, I'm constantly, when I'm doing kata, that's what I'm constantly doing. When, when I'm really studying, now if I'm just trying to do a workout real quick, I'll I'll go through it and move on. But if I'm really studying kata, that's what I'm doing all the time. I think that's where the where the confusion tends to lie, right? Because the performance of the kata, 
I'm to use in a very simple way, right? You're looking at your your very specifically in our training has always been analytical, analytical. Find those parts. Find those parts that are going to work well, <clears throat> that you, that that are going to perform well in these particular situations, right? Right. But it's never been about well the kata performance in itself, right? Is never never at least in our training has never been the, the emphasis. But yet we've seen a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on just performing the kata or right. just performing the technique, even the techniques, right? Making that mm-hmm. look nice, making that look good. Or do they actually work? Do they actually work under that pressure? I I tend to say no. I mean, just on the outs, just on the initial uh, discussion of it, because I mean, and I had this conversation with somebody a while back, and people talk about, well, you know, if, if you just do the kata, it, you, it it'll just naturally come out. Well, maybe, maybe not. And I, I bring I'll, I'll bring this topic up. And this, this is kind of how I feel about it. And, you know, I, I may be wrong, I may be right. I, just, I don't know, it's just my opinion. But let's say you go to a firing range. You know, with, with, you know you, you've got a, a, a Glock, okay? Let's just say you got a Glock handgun. All right, you go to, hand, you know, you go to the gun range, you shoot. You shoot a little at a little target. Okay, you get very good at shooting a target. Well, let's say you get confronted by somebody, you know, getting ready to. You, you have to deploy that in a self defense situation. You're used to shooting a target. Not right. that that's bad. Not that it's bad, but that target is not a human. Is, a lot of time, I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. It's not a, you know, it's not in the shape of a human. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But is that target also 3D? Is it also coming at you? Is it, you know, there's a lot of dynamics that are entered into that equation. Right. Which will and, ultimately affect how you actually perform under pressure or under stress. Exactly. And, and I, I think of... I think of people just doing kata without entering into that in also entering into the mindset of, you know, constantly thinking about what they're doing like this is like going to a gun range and only shooting bullseye targets and that's it. It's not that you're not developing a skill. It's just, is it complete or not? And that's always a question a lot of us always raise. I'm thinking from your story from last time of when you were talking about doing an exercise with people in mm-hmm. public, like together. I, I don't know if that was a necessary public performance or not, but I think it was just in a class. But you had put a lot of energy and effort into that kata, right? Into that right. exercise. Right. You were seeing a lot of other people were not. And yeah. that really raised that question for me is, well, on one's hand, hand, that that point is 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 completely salient. That these other people were just kind of going through the motions, and you were coming out with it full full uh, full lock and center. Yeah, if that's even a phrase. But the the other side of that is, <clears throat> at what point is it useful, and at what point is it over overuse? If that makes sense. Coming out full full cock, cock with with an exercise, ex- necessary to understand what you can do, what you can go and get out of it. Mm-hmm. Then I kind of try to put myself in the, the shoes of somebody who is along with you and thinking like, oh, I'm just doing the exercise right now. That's it. Um, right. I, I, personally, I think I mean, maybe it's the way I was trained. Maybe maybe it's 
you know, maybe it's part of how I grew up, you know, in a military family also. But, you know, you're, you're asked by, you know, basically your superior, you know, the, the per, person who you're teaching for or, or you're part of that organization. You're asked to do something in front of everybody. Right. And to me, it's like, okay, you're supposed to be representing that organization. You better show how you're going to represent it at that point. Because cause if you're going to represent it like like a weak willow branch and it needs to not it needs to be strong as an oak tree, you got a problem. And that I mean that's a that's one issue that I think this is a, this is the issue of public performance in general, right? Because right. we want to to show karate is strong. We want to show that karate is X, Y, and Z, right? Useful, practical, right. good looking, all these other things, right? Right. People don't always succeed at that, or they don't always know how to make that look look that way with what they're doing. Well, I I, I think it also depends on the expectations that are put on you. If you're constantly put in put in as expectations are, just do the exercise, just do the exercise. I mean, you're just basically it's kind of like babying people along. I'm sorry. No, that is that's that's completely right. Because you can't, because at some point you have to be able to put people on the spot and say, get it done, get it done right, get it done fast, yeah. get it done now. I mean, that transfers into the you know job market. I mean, you know, you come up with a situation, it's like, hey, this has to be done. Are you just going, okay, well, I'm going through the motion, do, 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 you know, are you going to Eeyore the thing or are you going to go Billy Jack on it and go kick some butt? You know, that's the main thing. Well, and, and, and that's the thing where getting getting people to the performance level right does not necessarily have to be you're either floating you're either floating or you're kicking ass you can raise people to get to that point um and to get to that point well right and and, it, and you're right in when you say about expectation and yeah. especially when it comes I mean, to the public performance side of things well yeah i mean it, it come it comes from the top i mean whoever's running that organization, I mean, if, if their expectation is, oh, we'll just do it, you know, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get much behind it. If, if you get, if you have the expectations of, um, when you do this, this is as if you are fighting for your life. You're going to do it a lot differently than if you're just, well, oh, just do it. Okay. You know, I mean, no, uh, uh-uh. So. Well, yeah, and then there, I mean, and that's where the split is, because when you're fighting for your life, you're not really worried about what it looks like. You're worried about the results of, of what's what's going to happen. You're worried about walking away. Right. That's not that's, necessarily something that's aesthetically pleasing. Right. And, and you know, I, th- I think one of the big problems that we have I mean, maybe it's a good problem, but a lot of people are just a bunch of powder puffs. I mean, they really, I mean, they, they go through life. And, good problem. A good problem. I, I mean, I mean don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it, it, it's a good problem. I mean, but it's a good problem to the point, to the point of, is it actually handicapping some people with just, naivety or something you know just really they're not aware of any of that yeah and so you don't have to worry about you don't actually have yeah. to worry about that but then it's are you going to be engaging with those people in terms of oh uh, do i have to deal with you in terms of defending my life or defending something or do i have to deal with you in terms of okay you're you're gonna come and do the thing that i'm doing that means i need we need to completely disassemble this powder, powder puff nonsense. Right. I mean, I, I guess that's some new technical term on, on the show is powder puff, but you know, it's just, you know, I, I, I just see. We're canonizing, we're canonizing that as terminology. Very good. Yeah. It, it, I think it also depends on your life situation too, 
Because right. if, I mean, if you're in a very safe environment, like, like if you're in some out of the out of the reaches, small little hole in the earth that really nothing ever happens. I mean, you, you're expecting, you know, leave it to Beaver to be basically playing as you're walking down the street. It's, they alienated like half the audience. No one knows what leave it to Beaver. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm 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 old. I know so, what leave it to Beaver is, but I only know that through osmosis. I, I mean, I mean, I, I'm, I I'm not up, criticizing. I'm just saying. I, mean, I grew up watching the reruns of it. You know, when I was okay. So show. this, all right, all right. Um, but, but, kids watch. But, go watch your TV Land. Okay, you'll yeah, get t- it. Yeah, TV Land's great. You know, I, but but if if that's your reality of the way the world works, you're never really going to incorporate stuff as if you're fighting for your life right because er- everything everything is warm and rosy and just fantastic well you know no <laughs> you go somewhere else that is not the case at all well, and then there's also the issue of you know our the, when we're talking about performance issues performance issues um those issues also occur when you have the false sense of security, right? Mm-hmm. So when you have the people who, and this comes from the people who train it just as much as the people who teach it. Mm-hmm. it it's a very sad thing to see when somebody thinks, well, I do karate, ergo, just the very fact I, I walk in here and do the motions means I can hold, hold myself to account. And then when in, when the chips are down, it doesn't work. And so, both in terms of when they go out to perform in public, and when something happens, and they need to actually use what they're doing. And that comes down to are are people being taught the I want to say are people being properly taught, but that comes down to getting people on board to seeing it as something that. That has to be both this thing that looks good, but this also thing that's practical. And I feel there was a certain point where that was the case, where that was just that was that was just a given. Yeah. And I don't know how that we got away from that. Well, you know, like I I have no idea how. I feel like twenty years ago, even we would have. Just said, yeah, yeah, you're part of the school, you know. You know, I I never really thought about it until you really asked that question right there, and I I can pretty much answer it pretty close. I mean, I'm I guess tonight I'm going to probably irritate a lot of people, but uh, that's okay. But I think where it really stopped was when people made it their livelihood. And not to say the dojo owners don't work hard. I'm I'm not saying that at all. But I know school owners cannot do the same things that you could do back in the seventies, eighties, nineties. You can't do it. You well, get sued off apart. you get you get sued off the planet if you did some of the I mean some of the dumb I'll be honest, some of the dumb crap we did, you can't do that today without getting sued. And But you know, couldn't when, we learn we, the lessons and still have the at least at least the attitude, right? At least have the kind the not the, I'm not talking about uh necessarily like we're gonna beat the crap out of each other and, and, and go home and, and and do that, but more of like just the attitude that is that, you know, you're doing karate, you're taking it seriously, you're taking it to that extent i feel like everything can boil down to attitude but especially when it comes to performance when it comes to to output right. maybe maybe that's not exactly the place you're no i i mean i get i get where you're going with it um but i i think it gets into the point when when it becomes when it comes to your livelihood 
there is a bit of fear as the school owner to play it a little safe. And, and in some ways, I don't think you can play it. In order to get these lessons, you got to be on the edge. I mean, you've really got to push people to the edge in order to get there. Or, or you know, and maybe, maybe I'm not seeing something, but, yeah, I mean, you've really got to push people to the edge so that, so that they're actually able to see it. I, 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 I rewatched a movie Miracle. I don't know if you've ever you ever seen that movie or not. Um, it's not a martial arts movie. I I, I grew up in the time when 1980 uh, U.S. Olympic hockey team beat you know beat the greatest team in the world, technically the greatest sports upset ever in, in the history of sports. And there's a part in that movie where where and the hockey players are, you know, they're going through the motions. They're going through, they're doing exactly what we're talking about. And finally, you know, coach, um, coach Herb Brooks gets, he's had enough. And he makes them do these, uh, the, the little exercise where they're run or not running, but they're skating, you know, this line, this line, this line, back, you know, back, back, you know, constantly doing it. And basically, doing suicides the skates. Yeah, kind kind of like suicides in basketball, you know. Right. Um, but it, I mean, they're literally about passing out, and finally somebody gets it, and it's like, no, we're not a bunch of individuals. We're a team, and we have to basically operate as a team. And then that's when he he stopped, and it was like. He he took it to almost an edge of madness. Even the assistant coaches were like, "This is absolutely insane. Somebody's going to get hurt really, really bad." But he took it to that point, and I, I think that's where martial arts, what we're missing today in martial arts, you you got to take it to that level, and most people don't want to go to that level. You see, I think you it. I agree. I, I do. And because you're not getting the performance out of people, right? Like you're, there's a, there's a, what you're saying is addressing a form of pedagogy that is push, 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 push until breaking point or breakthrough, right? Until yeah. someone's kind of broke through what they're able to do, right? Yeah. Um, and we kind of seen, seen in the movies and people try to maybe emulate that. I think we both in different times in training have experienced that, right? There's a way in of safely doing that and of kind of getting and in doing that in pushing a group of people and pushing a person individually. And I think that's that I think you're exactly on the ball with that. If you can get a group of people together to push them to a certain point, that builds cohesion. That builds oh. that builds a, like team. I don't want to say team spirit, but that pushes other people to better themselves. In that regard. Oh yeah. Um, and I think I think you're absolutely right. I, but I think there's a way you can do it safely. There's a way you can get everybody to 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 go through something safely. I think I have an example of this. But, well, let, 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 let me let me. No sure. more. I, 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 I think the other part that's tricky to this is are are the people who are practicing this going to trust the instructor to do it? In terms of, I mean, in order to keep, keep pushing them that hard, some people will, some people won't. The ones that won't, that's what you got to be fearful from lawsuits and everything else. So. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be dangerous, right? It doesn't have to be like like this thing. Like for example, it would be is like you wouldn't you wouldn't put a, a 16 year old kid who weigh, who's a buck fifty uh, soaking wet in the ring with someone who's bigger, stronger, and like in fe- like more experienced than them in a in a completely unsafe environment, right? right? You're talking about safety issues, and you 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 cannot put people in those situations. 
Uh, right. That piece, yes. But you can I get mean, that buck fifty kid to push and push and push. Right. And I think you can get the, them to work with people who are much skilled and bigger and stronger than them to be able to deal with the fact that that kid will have to deal with in a situation the bigger, stronger, faster person. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, not not so much, not just putting them in a ring, but I mean, ju- just your training. I, I, I remember... I remember Monday nights were always work out until you pass out or puke, basically. I mean, you just went totally nuts. Just everything from push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, dips, pull-ups, and then do it over again, do it over again, then, then do uh suburrito training then go back and do it again and do it i mean literally it, it was just I'll, I'll be perfectly honest i mean looking back at it from today i i don't think i could do it i i do not think i could do it today now back then i will say this that was probably the absolute best shape of my entire life i ever was do you feel that do you feel that type of class was more ad hoc, or was there a real was there a method to the madness? Method of the madness was basic. I I mean I get it now. It was to break everybody down for the rest of the week to train on what we were training on. But that was like your more like calisthenic, hard like physical training class, and the rest of the other classes weren't so much. Yeah, I mean, the other classes were, I mean, specifically, you know, study of kata, bonkai, uh, tuite, weapons, uh, bogu. It was just a kind I mean, just kept going on and on and on. I mean, there, there were some, some, sometimes we'd have classes where we would just take time and journal stuff. I mean, and, and I, I, I look back and, you know, that was probably just as important as everything physical, too. Here's my question, though, because I feel that is an exemplar of what we're talking about. Do you feel having something like that will get the best performance out of people? And if you could do that today, what would be the way in which we could do that? I think the the ability to break everybody down, that was, I think that was very important. I mean, some people would probably be for it, you know, because a lot of people are into all these other things like CrossFit and everything else. They'd probably be cool with it. Some people wouldn't. They, they just want to go in and, you know, train to train to fight and they just don't. They don't care about all this other stuff. And I, I think that takes away from it. Do you think it would be, do you think that gets the best performance out of people? Getting them to that point, getting them to that breaking point, and then kind of slowly putting, yeah, I, I, getting, yeah, I, getting them through, I, the week, through, through that. Because that feels like, it. That, that doesn't feel like, Kind of what we were talking about, I think a couple times ago was like the Tuesday Thursday attitude. It's that's like more of a much more serious minded training. Well, but I think I I think the I think the breaking point type of class how how we had it set up was essential because without that I don't think you could study the rest of the week. On, on what you're doing adequately. You might be learning stuff, you might pick up this, you might pick up that, but I don't think you were, you were able to clear your mind enough to be able to pick up a lot of stuff. And, and I look back at seminars that we used to go through, and I think I've mentioned this time and time again, if you don't get that get that breakthrough of okay you're you're clearing your mind of all this other stuff so that you can train adequately you're always going to be thinking about something other than what you're training in 
And I think that is key to getting your performance. However you can get to the point where you're thinking about whatever you're training on and you're present and you're clear about what you're training with, why you're training it, instead of thinking, well, I'm doing the Hanshi Shodan right now, but I'm really thinking about how how to, how to train with Joe, so I'm just going through the motions. That that's that's the trick. I mean that that's definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think I think that's that's the key to make it make that performance as solid as possible. I feel like that's part and parcel to karate training, and I feel that's also something that's going out the window because yes. when, because I don't, I don't think there's any real reason for it. I think it's just times moved on and we people forget that's important because if well, they get they get overly and I am guilty of this of the, well, getting too much in the weeds of 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 this and that and the other thing without well, without fo- having like having that one thing to just focus to go. Well, I I think you get into stuff I guess. Mm. As I like to call it. Stuff you know, like this. Well, a it, new term to or, add to the camp. Or, I mean, I, th- I think somebody else called it one time, you know, becoming like a cod a whore, you know, and I, I, and I, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, it, okay, that's too good. That's way too good. That's getting in, that's canonized. I, I mean, 100%. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, and don't get me wrong, there's, there's all this cool crap to learn. There is. I mean, there is. But if you don't take care of business with what you're doing with just a simple cut, I mean, with like a basic cut, if you're not taking business with just learning this, all this other stuff, you're going to forget and you're never going to practice correctly either. Oh, and therefore and, the, and then that that impacts your performance, that impacts how you train, that's how you're gonna actually do it. And that impacts everything. And I think it comes down to the simplicity of it, right? Because we you know yeah. we how many I mean, how many instances have we been talking about like how many kata and whatnot, but it's being able to go look and see at everything else is great, but without having that core training, mm-hmm. that that I feel I feel like everyone should just have that for the, be their Monday. Not about going to work; it's about doing getting that breakdown so you can yeah. actually get your stuff in. Like that's the more I think about it, the more we're having this conversation, the more I'm thinking like, yeah, like I got to just do that for myself on a Monday. Yeah. Because I always used to think like for my I'm thinking of my performance now. I'm thinking about my weekly training. I always leave my like big training for like the weekend. But if yeah. I actually did that, then it actually stops me, me me thinking like, oh yeah, Monday I'll just kind of take it easy and then get ramp up through the week. Nah, like just hearing that makes me think we should actually talk about this later but um it might be cool to create a training plan like that maybe yeah. hey, sorry i'm having kind of weird ideas it's making my brain go like okay because actionability right because right. we want we want to be able to to not just be like well, yeah performance it's, it's a great idea guys um subscribe on patreon <laughs> but well, no it's the idea of just Having that throughout the week, once a week, in some way, shape, or form, right? Mm-hmm. That's what this is about. This is like it's about a lot of things, but if there's one thing that'll help get all, make all the other things work, that's it. Yeah, it, and I, I remember having this this conversation with um, a friend of mine. It was I can't, I can't believe it's been 11 years ago. Uh, when, when I was uh, down in New Zealand, and I actually was m- with one of Marty's students, who who I, actually I I uh, 
I stayed with, you know, while I was down there. And he, he was asking me all these different questions and stuff. And, and I, he goes, what, what do you think is the most important part of karate? And I told him, I'm like, this is the best advice I can give you whenever you're training. Whatever you're training on, that is what you need to be concentrating on. That's what you need to be thinking about. Do not think about anything else. Don't think about any other kind. Of, don't think about anything else you want to learn. Don't think about, I got to pick up some eggs to come back home for the wife. None of it. Think about what you're doing because that's the most important part of your training, period. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's where it is, man. Like, and not having those 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 kind of breakdown workout where you're able to let your to 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 be able to get into it for the rest of the week that really makes me think it makes me reflect on my own training and reflect on like, like how how I have taught in the past and how I want to teach in the future. Right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know. So, uh, <laughs> And it doesn't mean that, you know, e- even with your best intentions, sometimes sometimes that slips away because you're trying to teach a lot of knowledge to somebody as quickly as possible, you know? Yeah. But that but that that's a that's a losing battle. You know yeah. I mean? Like to because you'll they'll learn more from less. Right. Right? They'll they'll be able to learn more from having that and they'll do better they'll perform better from having uh, a, a, the ability to break themselves down each week build themselves back up rather than yeah i mean you know, there's there's also something to be said about having a break from that they'll be able to to know much more they will know themselves know their abilities know their performance levels much more than teaching them 15 different katas or 17 different techniques or whatever yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, and, you know, I, I go back to, I, I mean, the, the most important lesson I ever got from Mr. Yada was, you know, I mean, I've told the story several times on here. When, when he pointed at, he's pointing at us and basically saying, you can't do my technique and then, I, I don't know how many people were were paying attention. I I know of one, you know, what years later we we talked about that class, and he even remember him saying this. It's like you can't do my technique, and I can't do yours. And basically, it comes right down to the fact you got to do it. You got to be able to put in what you need to do in order to make things happen. Period. And you got to be the one that have your mind clear to train. You got to be the one to take responsibility if something works or doesn't. And without, I mean, without that, you won't be able to make anything work. Like the no. performance of your of your techniques just ain't gonna. I mean, I mean with, without that ownership of what I can do is what I can do. Without that, you're constantly chasing. Well, I want to try to be like this, and I want to try to be like that. I can testify so, to having that problem. For yeah. A couple of years. I can testify well, to having that. Who, I think who, everyone who does, has, but I mean. Who, who has it? I mean, I, I, I look at not just karate, but I mean, it, it's everywhere. Let's talk about MMA a little bit. Last weekend was fight with Nate Diaz. I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I'm, many people. I'm lost on that, but to be honest, but I, I I watched the highlights of it, and it was really interesting because I mean he he fought fought this guy Leon Edwards, mm. very technical person, and. I mean, he was, Leon Ed, Edwards pretty much mopped the ring with 
Nate Diaz for four rounds. And then I think he kind of got comfortable. And Nate Diaz just about beat him in the fifth round. And that goes back to kind of what we're talking about performance. It was like that guy, I, I don't know. I I don't know the whole the whole deal with a lot I mean a lot of his training things like that but the thing of it is is he's got that he's got that intentionality that I was talking about yeah and it's like and I liked what one another fighter said he goes when you fight this guy. You have to train as if you're going to kill him. You're not training for a fight. You're training to kill him. Which, that's totally different than just a competition. Yeah. And and you can't match your performance levels correctly. And if you don't know what that is, and, and this is where, going back to your statement about forming a team, you need... You need to have people around you to push to that point. You cannot. It's difficult to find it too, and I understand. You know, everyone's in their own different situations, myself included. But you cannot yeah. cut people. Like, and this goes into to attitudes as well. You can't cut people out. You need to to push with people. You need to be able to push along with that and all the different ways it comes out. Because Jesus, man, like in that type of situation, you have got to be ready. It, and you know, I'm I'm not taking anything away from you know Mr. Edwards by any means. I mean, very technical person, but it just seemed like you know Nate Diaz has a total different attitude on how how he approaches things than anybody else. And I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, I I kind of admire the guy. You know, I'm like, you know, that's that, that's something we need more of and mm. how to bottle that up and present it. That's maybe a bit of a different story. And I think, I, I think there's maybe a couple of ways we can, we, we can discuss it. But. Right. But I mean, but yeah, I mean, his, his journey is a lot, his journey is different than mine or everybody else's, but, but anyway, that's all I really wanted to say about that. But that's kind of the, uh, just kind of the, the direction I think I think somehow training needs to go towards. Yeah. I, I don't know if it will or not. Well, and that's up to each individual. I think your description of, of that type of a class, and I was thinking about this before with other people as well, ultimately needs to be the thing that wins in, in this generation. In this yeah. particular generation of karate, of karate people, it needs to be the thing that wins out. It needs to be the thing um, that is there and that gets passed down. If there's anything people are worried about, right? If there's any, all of this, oh, this is going to die, that's going to die. Blah, 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 blah. Now, what's dying is this. Everyone's yeah. got, everyone's got somebody doing a freaking caught on video now. Yeah. Stop, stop worrying about that. Worry about the performance of it. Worry about your, your, your general performance as, as a martial artist. Worry that make worry make sure that the people you're training with, the people you're teaching, can perform well. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I, and I mean the only other thing, only other thing I guess I've got is, is you know, it, it even if they can't perform it well, can they bring it out in you well? Yeah. Right. I. I if you've got older people, you know, 60s, 70s, even even 80s plus, they're more than likely not going to be able to do a lot of things that a 20-year-old is going to be able to do physically. They're just not. I mean, their bodies, you know, with all that training, it's, it's taking a toll. It has to. But can they get you to that point? So. I, can I tell a quick story about that? So I was, I was eight. Uh, I was sixteen. Yeah, I was sixteen. I was in this class 
in an afternoon class at the place I used to train at. There was this old guy. And he was in his 60s. And he was, we were at the same rank at the time. We did our black belt together. And we were doing just what is was supposed to be a light sparring class. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I noticed at all the like little sparring sessions that I've done, I'd done, in, done before. It was like well until like I get brown belt at that point or whatever. It was the first time I noticed on my arms, chest, and like back and, and like and back and stuff welts and like bloody welts and stuff like that from this guy from this guy in his 60s and you would think nah he'll be fine he's, he's an old man now nah, old man hit hard <laughs> like, well, so, so so well, so i would say nah, no nah, we, we you'll get no problem with performance from people who are old depending on well, the person but you'll get no problem with that it won't be it, won't, it might not necessarily be the people to represent 100 percent, but right. I mean, you know you, you, you're not going to see him, you know, fly through the air with double jump split kicks and things like that, you know, 10 feet high and all, everything else. Like, you know, some, some places do. I mean, there, there, there are going to be some limitations, but there are going to be some things that they're stronger in. And so it's, it's just different. Well, and that helps forge community, right? So, right. I mean, like that's in the, so, boom, there we go. Cool. So anything you got going on this this week or things you're going to wor- work on this week? Yeah, just, just, like I said, just keep going. I mean, just slow and easy still. So it's about, my hamstrings getting a lot better. Just, I, I, I can tell when it's just starting to twinge and I just, okay, back off, back off. So, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to keep going. So that's the lowest limits. Yeah, yep. I think I think I'm gonna try um, recording this on a for you it's a Saturday for me it's a Sunday. I think I am gonna try that breakdown class. I have the time. Actually. Yeah, oh, no. that's cool. So I'm gonna try it, and uh, maybe we'll, we can talk about that, and that'll be behind some some sort of wall where uh, things can be exchanged for goods and services. But beyond that, Jeremy, thank you so much for jo- for joining us as always. Invaluable stuff, really. Invaluable stuff. Folks, don't forget to keep on training.
be a good uh. group open. Anyway, um, so much for that. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, folks. Welcome to Karate Without Belts. My name is John, joined by the illustrious... And I'm Jeremy. Uh, sure. The illustrious and I'm Jeremy. Okay. That's okay. You want to try? You want to? You want to? You want to do another uh, run of that? 